It's a real pleasure for me. On the name of my embassy and the name of my country, Niger, to be here today uh, with this big gathering. And I would like uh, really to thank the administration of the, this institute, who thank to meet, uh, to invite us to share some experience with the students of uh, this institute. It's a big pleasure for me. And uh, uh, it's all time difficult to, to come and speak to students because uh, uh, we don't know exactly what we, we want to say. But today I will, uh, I will try to, to start by one video. I invite you to visit the Niger, free of cost. By this video you will see, you will have a small idea of the country. Because uh, this country, so many times people confuse with Nigeria, it's different country, with uh, uh, his uh, realities different sometimes from Nigeria also. So this first step of our our interaction will be this small video, I think six or seven minutes, and then we we will uh, discuss together. Let's see where is the where is the technician. <laughs> we can start the, the video. Thank you. 
consumers. So I said with this position we have, uh, uh, it gives us also a market of approximately 500 million consumers because uh, uh, Niger belongs to some sub-regional organization like uh, WAMU, what we call West African Monetary and Economic Union, and uh, ECOWAS, ECOWAS is the, the West African a, a economic organization and the global WTO. This, this uh, uh, kind of uh, regional organization help us to boost our business and the economic in the sub-region. So what, what we are doing uh, to, to strengthen the, the investment sector? The government uh, has taken several measures and reform to make the business climate more attractive because uh, the country is rich in minerals, like we have seen. The, the needs of investment also is very huge. So uh, the government is working to create a good environment to bring foreign, foreign investors and also local investors in the country. So for that, we are working on the, the what we call the, the green business area. You know, what Bank uh, every year has an annual report, uh, which measuring the reforms and the regulation that enhance business activity and the those that constrain it. It measures and track change in regulation affecting 11 areas in the life cycle of business, for example, registering property, creating credit, protection investor, investors, taxes, and so on and so to improve, to improve this business environment, the national, we have a national committee under the personal leadership of the president who meet every month to evaluate the impacts of different reform and process of liberalization of economy. The president take care of this because he said if we want to, to bring the, the investors, we have to show them that we have the one of the best environment for business. It's why he's, take, he's taking personally care of this, this kind of activities. So our big commitment for that are to reduce the risk for the investor and entrepreneur. Because when you want to invest your capital, your money, you have to be sure that the risk is reduced. I don't say it's, uh, the risk is, is, is zero, but you can reduce the risk. It's why we, the president is taking care of this uh, committee to, give the, to reduce the risk for the foreign investors to come in the country. The political risk you see that our country is a democratic country. I think we have uh, uh, more than 100 political parties working in the country. The government is a coalition. And, uh, and uh, uh, this president has been reelected last year only for five years, two terms, five years. After that, we have to go for election for new president. And in our parliament also, you have more than 10 parties to have the MP represent. This gives some, some kind of guarantee. When you know that you are going to invest in a democratic country, you know that they have some, uh, uh, how do you say, the regulation, regulation rules and the, the legislation who can protect the investors. It's very important. You cannot uh, wake up one morning and say that you're, 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 what you invest has been taken by the government. It's not possible with this kind of demo. It's very important for, uh, to take the decision and the risk to invest in the country. We also have one very good advantage for the investors in this area. Uh, we have one, one uh, 
uh, one common currency for eight countries. The same currency is working for eight countries with uh, this uh, economic uh, West Africa economic region. We have the same currency and we have the same central bank. This is very helpful for the investor who want to, to invest one of this country and do business with the other country. So it can reduce the risk of the flip, money fluctuation because we know that in some countries every year the, the money is going down and for investors sometimes it's a big problem to, to, to get the investment in back. So these are the, some uh, business, business uh, uh, reforms and the rules which we are trying to, to conduct in Niger to, to create a very good environment and to, to bring more investors. Because today uh, we need particularly our new partners from Asia like India to come and be partner of, you have seen all the program we want to do. We don't have uh, the fund to do all this program. We need the partnership of our international uh, uh, friends. And today, India is one of the big friends of Africa. We, we deal with the Western countries. And now the, the, the big change will come in, a, in a Africa, and particularly in Niger, is to have some kind of diversification of the economic and the trade partners. So in Asia, India and China are the big partners. So I think for you young, young generation, it's very important to know that your country, your business, uh, your businessman and woman have place to, to play, have a, a game to play in Africa and particularly in my country. Most of the time, uh, they just uh, realize that China is a big partner. But what China do in Africa, I think with the experience I have, India can do better. <laughs> so uh, this kind of invitation, you have to think, think big, is what my, my teacher tell, tell me every time. You have to take big that you can play a good a good a good game in a win win situation in Africa, particularly in Niger, my country. You have I have one experience. There is uh, two years back, one uh, young uh, uh, graduate Indian come to me with his father, asking me uh, what he can do in my country. I said. You can do everything because we need investors in all sectors. And he decided to go in Niger with the support of his father. He's a, I think he just graduated from UK. After, after this, he come here. They come to me. And uh, I, I encourage him to go to Niger and to see what he can do. This gentleman, after two years, he created... Uh, Renewal water unit. He, he get now he's the first, his mineral water company is the best company in Niger. And, uh, uh, this year he come back to me. He said, you see, my work is, is, is going well in your country. I want to expand my activities. And I go to the bank. They give me a loan. Now I want to, to create uh, uh, one more unit of, of drink, soft drinks. This gentleman, uh, he showed me that everything is possible when you, when you, you, you are confident in yourself. You get him, you give him the most support we can give, and he success now in Niger. So you can do it you also. You can do it. With us, we are in here in Zambasi to support all the, the people who want to go and have business in the country. We, 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 we work with the, our ministry in charge of the, the, the trade 
and finance ministry to give the most support they can give to this kind of business, young businessmen who want to go and invest in my country. This is uh, very important. It's what I want to, to tell you about the, about the business environment, what we want to create to bring more people, more Indian, you Indian who have money, you have to, to, to invest more investment, not only for, uh, for market, investment to produce, uh, uh, to give job opportunities to Indians and Africans, and also to, to, to improve the quality of life of the population. Because uh, we have many uh, trade relations, but we need to go uh, more than trading. We want investment also. It's very important. Because investment is what we can, can change the, the big structure of the economy of our countries. So, uh, I'd like to, uh, to mention something because when we talk about Africa, we talk about Niger, uh, we see a single country. Niger is, uh, uh, is one of the largest country in West Africa with uh, 1,200,000 square meters. And the population is uh, around uh, 19 million. This is very small for India. 19 million. And most of our countries are like this. Small population, large, and this we cannot success in this kind of uh, configuration. If I say that, is to, to come and to talk to you about the, the necessary uh, uh, integration, economical integration of our countries. We try to do it on the sub-regions, because Africa is divided in five sub-regions. You have north, you have west, you have the central, you have east and southern Africa. We start the integration, economical integration, by the sub region. It's very important because we realize that each country, individual country, cannot success in, the, in this world. It's not possible. The, the, the competition is so hard, the, the, the rule are so difficult, and if you don't go together, it's very difficult to success. So we try to build uh, an economic and regional environment. For people also, I think it's more important. When you come, you decide to invest. When you know that you can get a, you can get a market of 300 million, it's better than to come in a single country with uh, about 15 or 17 million. So we are working on this, and uh, uh, we, we rely that uh, today Africa also is changing. We know that Africa is now the, the new frontier, an, impo an important growth call for economic recovery, and uh, also attractive business destination for capital. It has become uh, fashionable to talk about Africa rising. We remember that six of the world's ten fastest growing economies are from Africa. And the continent has been growing at an average of 5% uh, every year. This optimism is based also on the continent resources, useful age structure, growing population. Africa is, a, I think, all Africa we have approximately the same population population that India, and also increasing middle class and consumers. This means that uh, we have uh, some uh, so changing, the society is changing, and Africa has become more attractive for the investment. I can say that uh, India is, is a, I think, must be the fifth uh, foreign investors in Africa. He has to move to become the first, because it's possible. The first one is, is India, uh, uh, China, but India can, uh, 
I think you can do more. And change this position, position of fifth, fifth uh, base in the trade, uh, uh, in the foreign investment. Africa, like I say, has become the next investment frontier and seen as a continent of opportunity. And we see this optimism in the number and diversity of business and countries looking to invest in the continent. Africa must, must not be seen as 54 individual states, but as a continent in transformation through the economic integration with our five regional economic regions. And we strongly believe that integration is essential for the continent to participate in the global economy and create more attractive markets. This is very important because uh, the founder of uh, the African Union, uh, the father of the African Union, early, like Common Kuma, they have said that Africa must unite or collapse. Because uh, when you go for negotiation, a single small country, what is your power? in the area of negotiation. You know how difficult are negotiations today, particularly nowadays when we see what happened in North America. Uh, so this, uh, uh, the fathers of this African Union, as early they have said that Africa has to move forward with uh, unity, not in small, small, single countries. And the new generation, also think that it's very important that we have to move. And now we are working also <coughs> in the, what we call the, uh, the program of African Union 27, uh, 2060, and we want to create a, a free zone in all Africa, a free zone where you can do business from one country to another country without borders. We want to change this situation that we are working like a single country. We want to move together because we are more strong when we work together. This is a kind of message I want to, to share with you to see how the changing Africa also is transforming because uh, the democracy is going, uh, the investment opportunities are there, and the, the, the young generation and the middle class also is growing. Uh, we have huge market for every kind of investment. This is uh, uh, something we need to, to tell you, and uh, it's very important to have it in your mind that this continent is a continent also for the next generation. It's what I want to share with you. And I, before uh, before uh, finish my speech, I want to come back about the the geo geopolitical position of my country. We have seen on the map that we are between North Africa and, uh, uh, and uh, Sub-Saharan countries. And if you, are, if you look, you will see which countries, are, which countries are our neighbors. We have in the North, Libya. I think everyone knows what happens in Libya. This country has been destroyed by Western countries. They kill the leader, and today this country become the 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 terrorist hub. You can find more than 100 terrorist group working in this country. But for the security of my country and the security of our region, this become a very big problem. So uh, you have to know it that this region also have a security, a real security problem. And the main problem comes from this collapse of the Libya regime. Before the country was safe, we have good relations with the country. The, 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 the Qaddafi controlled his country. And now, today we have two, two governments in, 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 uh, in, uh, in this country, in Libya. Two governments, many armies, two parliaments. So you see how difficult is it? How can they manage and control the country 
with this kind of uh, disorder. This is one big challenge for us. And we have other, other neighboring countries which are facing some radicalism, integrism, terrorism. You have Mali, where some uh, Akri, uh, this is a, a terrorist group are working also. You have Nigeria, where Boko Haram is uh, destroying this area. All these bring us uh, uh, a big challenge economically and also for the, uh, the security of the, of the country because we have to put more money for the security of the region, of our country. The money we need to put in education, in health, due to this problem, security problem, we have to take and put in the security. This is a, a big challenge for my country, and we are working on this with our partners. We try to put together our efforts. We create, now we have one, one group of five countries called G5. These, uh, these are countries like Mauritania, Mali, Niger, Burkina, and, uh, and Chad. And we put our uh, defense forces together to see how we can tackle this uh, problem, this big problem of security. It's not easy to, to totally uh, finish with this uh, problem, but we have to work together if we want to win. And uh, I think in this area also, we can, we can learn from India also faces some problem of terrorism. It's to say to you that uh, we have global challenge. We have uh, the challenge we have to take together. This challenge uh, today are the economic to give uh, a world with uh, uh, economic justice, a world where the governance, world, a world governance must be more, more equity. And today, India also, like Africa, are uh, working to make this world governance more equity. Because uh, you know that uh, India and Africa, till now we don't have any place in the, national, uh, in the Security Council of UN. It's not just more than one, million, uh, one, one billion here, more than one billion in Africa, and uh, we don't say anything on the security of, of the world. It's not, it's not just we have to change these rules, and I think together with uh, India and Africa, together we can work to bring more reforms in the global governance and bring more equity and democracy in the world also. These are the, some points I want to share with you, and thank you for giving me this time to, to talk to you. Thank you. May I humbly please request you to stay on stage for a question and answer yes, round from yes, the students? Yes. May I request the students to please come up with your questions and please give them your name first and then the question you intend to ask. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, what are the emerging business opportunities in Niger? Like in India, we have e-commerce and services emerging rapidly. So what are the emerging business opportunities in Niger which we can grab in the coming years? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, for this uh, question. Uh, I think, uh, like you say, all the sectors we need investment. And today, what this is the more, most important sector where I see India is going is the sector of uh, pharmaceutical products. There is huge huge demand of uh, of this kind of activities. Uh, every day, uh, uh, I give visa for the Indian people, Indian businessmen going there, sometimes for trade, sometimes also to try to, to, to invest and create some pharmaceutical units in the country. This demand is very important. And also, in the, when you take uh, the area of uh, energy, solar energy, we, the country is, uh, is very big and we have the, the solar uh, 100%. So the, the demand of energy also is so important. So in this area also I think you can find many opportunities uh, to invest in the country. It's very, it's very important to know that many sectors 
अपना हेल्थ हेल्थ सेक्टर एजुकेशन सेक्टर एंड एनर्जी सेक्टर दीज थ्री सेक्टर्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड ऑल्सो एग्रीकल्चर बिकॉज वी आर एग्रीकल्चर कंट्री देयर आर मेनी अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन दिस एरियाज सो द डे यू विल बी रेडी कम टू मी स्टूडेंट आल्सो यू कैन कम यू कैन डिस्कस एंड लाइक कैन यू कैन शो यू द वे टू गो एंड इन्वेस्ट देयर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर नेक्स्ट Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Good afternoon. Uh, so my question to you is, I'm Oric. Uh, my question to you is, uh, uh, like you said, you've seen how China has influenced other countries around you. So do you think it is very easy or difficult to tackle how China, you know, brings in investment, and is it easy to ignore their investment opportunities? Uh, you believe uh, India is a great partner for Niger, right? But uh, if uh, China wants to say invest in your country heavily, like they do in other parts of uh, Africa. Do you think it is going to be difficult for you to say uh, stay away from that? Or would you mm. like to embrace it? Can you repeat because I don't. I, or someone give more clarification for this okay, question. Okay, I, I would I would reiterate. Yeah. Uh, China does a lot of investment in other countries. Yes. Uh, but you see China as a country that uh, dominates the countries that they deal with. Do you think it is uh, going to be easy for you to not take China's help, or would you be open to taking China's help and India's help? Yeah. Now I understand the, the question. I think uh, uh, we are in a global competition. You you play the game economically, and uh, it depends on what you what kind of game you play. You know, China is different from India. The political system is not the same. The economical system is not the same, and the financial power is not the same. When India gave a uh, ten uh, billion. Loans for Africa, China give more than 100. So it's not the same situation. And the, the politic of China is to give more grants. You understand? For example, uh, for my country, China decided to to build 500 hospital bed, 500 bed hospital on grant basis. I am not sure that India can do the same today. Right. So they have their own strategy to to enter and stay in the economic area of the country. But I say uh, uh, you have to understand. You have to uh, when I say you, I am talking about uh, India. India has to have its own strategy also to be a real partner of the of the African economy. Because uh, maybe the way India, uh, China use is not the way people are waiting for. So we can bring some change and uh, do better. That's what I can tell you. Thank you. Next, I think everything is clear.